If you use the Cooler Master Spawn or MM520, or you want to rest your ring finger on the mouse, then this could be a great option for you. I've been trying to focus on competitive mice these days, and this shape is not one I would consider for competitive first person shooter players. See, I've basically built the channel on the idea that grip width is the most important measurement for aim. It's where we place our fingers. The thinner you can handle, the better. And this mouse is the opposite of that principle. It has a grip width of over 7cm, which is way too wide. But they've put competitive features on it. Pretty much all the features of the MM710, which is a top competitive mouse. So it has a really nice, amazing flexible cable. It's super lightweight at about 50 grams. And it has a 3389 optical sensor, which like the other top opticals is seemingly flawless. Also has nice PTFE feet and a slow latency at about four milliseconds. So clearly the MM520 sold well enough for them to remake this instead of the MM530, which I would have said is a more competitive shape, which means the people using this mouse are wanting to enjoy the top tier gaming mouse features. I would say it's good for palm grip if your hands are under 17 centimeters. The hump is pretty low at about 3.6, so I'd say you need under 17 centimeters for claw palm too. And fingertip? Well, if you use fingertip grip, you should probably look at different mice. This is a quick review, but mice are so good these days, there really isn't too much to cover. And this is such a unique mouse, you really don't have much to choose from. So if this is what you want, then this is it. Here's a button sound check for you anyway. The buttons are fairly nice, decent click to them. They feel a bit better on the white copy, but as always, that can change copy to copy. The scroll has some steps. They feel a bit lighter than usual, which I would say is not a good thing. I prefer the one on the MM710. And it is a little noisy. A little too much travel on the side buttons in my opinion, but they do have a nice click. And lastly, the build seems fine, no rattles. Something I haven't been a fan of is Cooler Master's plastics. I mean, they're okay, but they just feel a bit cheap. However, these seem much better. The black has a bit of matte texture, but feels quite smooth, while the white has an almost glossy texture, which is my favorite. They feel solid, really nice. Here it is with some other mice so you get a general idea of the size. I've been over the software before. It is getting better, still not 100%, but just make sure you go in here and set it to four milliseconds. Actually, on that note, the latency was a bit strange. It was hard to check in the bump test because of the shape, and I found it harder to get consistent low scores in the human latency test. So maybe Cooler Master need to look at this and maybe give a firmware update. Not sure what's happening, it might just be me and my testing. So that's it. It's a top mouse in terms of features. It's just a matter of shape. If you like this shape, then I can highly recommend it. If you don't like this shape, then obviously it's just not for you. That's the thing these days. Mouse choice is mostly about shape because we're getting so many mice with top features on the market. So I hope that helps. Big thanks to Cooler Master for sending these out for review. All thoughts are my own, of course. And usual links in the description if you want to help support what I do. Subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.